Hey everyone, we are going to get started. Uh, welcome to the Steps to an Optimized and Automated Lab webinar. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Nick Erickson, your host for this webinar. Today I'm joined by Matt Mayer, the Product Manager for Instron's Engineered Solutions. In this role, Matt works with customers across a wide spectrum of industries that are looking to improve some aspect of their testing process, whether it be safety, efficiency, throughput, repeatability, or some combination of the above. Uh, Matt's expertise lies in automation, which includes everything from automating a singular aspect of the process, such as specimen measurement, all the way to full robotic systems that handle the entire testing process so that operators can focus on more of the value add tasks in the lab. After Matt's presentation, he'll be addressing some of the questions that come in so feel free to send those in as we go along. With that said, I'm gonna turn things over to Matt. Hi everyone, thank you all for attending uh, and welcome to the webinar. So as Nick said, my name is Matt Mayer and I'm the product manager at Instron that covers automation. So today we're gonna to talk about how we can optimize testing labs with semi-automated and fully automated solutions. We'll start by looking at the workflow of a typical lab using a manual Instron system and try to highlight some of the areas for improvement. Then we'll move into some of Instron solutions and how they can have a positive impact on a lab's performance. We'll be using plenty of real world data and examples to tie this all together. So let's start with an overview of a generic testing workflow and the three main stages, what we're calling testing parameters, the specimen test cycle, and then data export and handling. So as we go through these stages, I want you to think about the people who are involved and also the one-time setup and daily reoccurring activities required along the way. Stage one is testing parameters. This involves things like high-level setup of test methods to ensure compliance with international or company standards, and then also the daily tasks of choosing the appropriate test method or entering specimen information like batch identifiers, lot numbers and tolerances into the software. This typically involves both lab managers and operators. Next is stage two, the specimen test cycle. This is where the operator performs the actual test from dimensional measurement, loading the specimen, extensometer attachment, the test itself, and then removing the specimen when the test is complete. In most cases, the actual time the specimen is under test, that orange block above is not affected by the test equipment being used, but the time taken by each of the other steps, all the ones in blue, will vary depending on the testing frame and accessories. The final stage, data export and handling, involves three different types of people and has substantial one-time and reoccurring costs. Many labs have operators enter the, the completed test data into separate workstations, and this data is critical for making business decisions based on how the results look. This can be an incredibly inefficient part of the process. So let's break down the reoccurring activities that are part of these stages. Many labs will fall within these time ranges here, and there are certainly plenty of labs that don't. These figures are meant to represent a run-of-the-mill generic lab. I'd like to note that we're focusing on these reoccurring activities because they provide the best opportunities for improvement with semi-automated and fully automated solutions. There are a number of one-time setup activities performed by IT, by the lab manager, and by the operator, but we won't be focusing on those in this webinar. So let's look at some real world data. Here's an analysis of an actual lab that falls just about in the middle of the time ranges with a seven and a half minute total cycle time. This is a lab with Blue Hill 3. They're entering specimen information into the software before the test, taking three thickness and width measurements with traditional calipers, using a clip-on extensometer with manual grips, and the tensile test time itself is around two minutes. After the test, the operator prints results and then enters them into a separate terminal tied to the company MRP system. This ends up being right around 64 specimens per eight hour shift. You'll see the biggest time requirement here is stage two, which is the specimen test cycle. This is also going to provide us the biggest opportunity for improvement. Plotting this on a timeline, you can see how much of the seven and a half minute cycle time is taken up by each of the three stages. In an eight hour shift, one and a half hours are spent on the testing parameters, four hours are spent on the specimen test cycle, and two hours are spent with data export and handling. 
So we've gone over the different phases of a test, the time requirements associated with each stage and who is involved along the way. Now, how can we optimize things? Well, improvements in a lab will affect each of these four categories here. Safety, variability, efficiency, and throughput are the main ways semi-automated and fully automated tools are able to improve performance in a lab. We'll be looking at each one to get a better idea of how Instron solutions fit in these categories. Let's start with safety. Over the past decade especially, there's been a huge focus on safety in labs, and rightfully so. With semi-automated and fully automated solutions, we're able to reduce the chance of safety incidents while increasing operator comfort and confidence. Long-term, this can be a huge cost savings. If you think about how much disruption even one safety incident causes. According to OSHA, it's estimated that employers pay almost $1 billion per week directly towards workers' compensation costs alone. And that's just the direct payments, so think about how much other disruption comes along with that. When you start to integrate solutions like automatic extensometry or pneumatic grips with specimen stops, you're reducing an operator's exposure to potential hazards and the likelihood of a safety incident drops. Then of course, when a system is being run by intelligent software and a robot inside a fully enclosed work cell, operators are removed from the system entirely and the risk of a safety incident drops dramatically. Next, let's think about variability. Variability between operators and systems will always be part of life in a lab, but there are plenty of tools that can help reduce this variation. For example, looking at the stress strain graphs on the right side of the screen, you can see the effect of automatic extensometers versus traditional clip-on extensometers. Using tools like the automatic extensometer and enhanced specimen measurement, you can begin to eliminate a few percent of this type of variation at each stage. For fully automated systems, the robotic handling system is able to move specimens through a system with repeatability of less than a millimeter. So for each step in the process, from specimen measurement to loading a specimen in the grips, that extra precision helps reduce variability in the system even further. I'd like to play a quick video showing an enhanced measurement station to demonstrate one of Instron's tools that can help eliminate variability. This tool can be used on both fully automated and semi-automated systems. What you're seeing here is a horizontal specimen measurement device that is part of a fully automated work cell. This device will take three width and three thickness measurements automatically and then return the maximum, minimum, or mean of the three values to Blue Hill Universal. This tool can actually be used on both fully automated and semi-automated systems and can measure a wide range of specimens, including ones that are bent, bowed, and twisted. So the next theme is efficiency. And this is one of the benefits that often gets overlooked. Labs are able to free up operators from time that would typically be spent directly in front of an Instron system, allowing them to perform other value-added tasks, including things like specimen preparation, analyzing results, or writing reports. Fully automated systems take efficiency to the extreme. Operators are only needed to barcode specimens and then load them into the system, which typically takes around one hour per eight-hour shift. The time gained is incredible, and the return on investment for fully automated systems presents a much stronger case than one might initially think. So let's go back to that initial lab we talked about and plug in some real numbers. Over an eight-hour shift, the operator's time requirement to test the same number of specimens is reduced to five hours with semi-automated solutions like the automatic extensometer, an enhanced specimen measurement device, and pneumatic grips. With a fully automated system, you're down to just one hour. 12.5% of the initial time requirement. That frees up seven full hours of an operator's time per day, so you're basically adding one additional lab technician without adding any overhead. To put that into dollars and cents, let's just use a nice round, fully burdened labor rate of $100 per hour. With 2,000 working hours per year, operating a manual system costs $200,000 in labor, a semi-automated system costs $125,000 in labor, and a fully automated system costs just $25,000 per year in labor. The final category of lab Im improvement is throughput. This is typically one of the first things that comes to mind when any type of automation, automated solution is mentioned. The number of specimens a lab or a single frame can test per day will increase as labs implement these tools and solutions we've been discussing. One of the ways we achieve this is with automated solutions is what is called concurrent operation. 
Concurrent operation is where the automated system makes sure that the test specimens are present at each station, keeping the system occupied and multitasking while decreasing idle time. I'd like to show a quick video clip demonstrating an automation system testing aluminum with two tensile frames simultaneously. Here you're seeing a system with one robot that is feeding two tensile frames, essentially doubling the testing throughput with all of the other advantages that full automation brings. The system is also using the AVE2 automatic non-contacting extensometer on both frames, which in this case is capturing data to calculate R value and N value. This is a great example of how advanced solutions can increase testing throughput in a lab. Software and data processing can also play a huge part in increasing throughput in a lab. Blue Hill Universal is used on both semi-automated and fully automated systems and is able to streamline the data handling process. During the first stage of testing, operators are setting up parameters in the software depending on the, the specimen material, ASTM or ISO standard, and more. With features like choice inputs and linked values, setup requires much less time and reduces the chance of operator error in, tune, in turn, reducing the time needed to correct mistakes down the road. Then during the final stage of testing, Blue Hill Universal's advanced export capabilities make integration with ERP and MRP systems simpler than ever. Fully automated systems come with the ultimate data processing tool, where an operator previously had to select one of perhaps dozens of methods, materials, and specimen types, the, systems performs, the system performs these tasks and more automatically. Bidirectional data handling instantly gathers all of the necessary information before a test starts and then instantly exports the data to the database, ERP, or MRP system. This means that a lot of things are done quickly and correctly every single time. The secret to an optimized lab is leveraging technology to improve in these four categories as much as possible. Instron has a wide range of tools to help accomplish this for all applications and testing requirements. Both semi-automated and fully automated solutions do this incredibly well and can help reduce cost in a lab no matter what the lab looks like. For those who would like more details on Instron solutions, please visit instron.com, check out our YouTube page, or contact your local Instron salesperson. Instron has the expertise to assist with every type of application or challenge no matter what you're testing. One final thing I'd like to mention, Instron product manager Kayla Thackeray presented a great webinar a few weeks ago titled, How to Increase Testing Throughput and Lower Variation. This webinar takes an in-depth look at common sources of error in a lab and takes a step further into solving common testing pain points. This webinar, along with many others, is available on our YouTube channel and on instron.com. So that concludes the initial part of the presentation. And what I'd like to do is answer a few questions, starting with some that were submitted in the past few weeks when attendees signed up for this webinar. After that, I'll work through questions that came in today during the webinar. So feel free to submit questions now so we can cover them after this part of the presentation. The first question that came in was about an automated tester for auto-injector pen specimens. Just a few weeks ago, Instron's senior applications engineer, Landon Goldfarb, presented a webinar on auto-injector systems, so I'd encourage people to watch that presentation. Instron's standard auto-injector testing solution is what you see on the left here and is semi-automated, meaning that one pen is tested at a time with an operator replacing the pen after each test. A fully automated system takes the solution and feeds the specimen one after the other in an enclosed work cell like you see on the right. Next, we had a question about digital input output cards and strain control. Digital input output or digital IO cards are used with an Instron frame and Blue Hill software, and this allows the operator to trigger external or internal events. This feature is available on both 5900 and 6800 systems. For strain control, Instron systems are able to use closed loop strain control with many different types of extensometers, including the Auto X750 and traditional clip on extensometers. This is particularly useful for customers testing metal specimens to ISO 6892 or ASTM E8 because of the benefits that strain control offers over extension or stress control. The next question is about the price of automated systems. With such a wide range of applications and solutions from automated auto injector systems to testing one inch thick steel specimens and everything in between, 
The price of automation systems really varies depending on customer requirements and the scope of the project. Instron has three automated platforms, the AT2, the AT3, and the AT6, each with its own advantages and applications. I'd encourage anyone looking for more information to reach out to their local Instron salesperson or in, at Instron applications engineer who can help determine the scope of the project and ultimately get a technical proposal to you. The last question was about testing round steel specimens using an automation system. This is actually fairly common and the setup is very similar to what it would take to test flat dog bone specimens. The only differences are the specimen storage racks, robot fingers, and tensile grips, which will all have a V shape to hold round specimens as opposed to a flat surface for flat specimens. Aside from that, testing round specimens or flat dog bone specimens is essentially the same. That's it for the questions we had leading up to the webinar today, and it doesn't look like there are any additional ones in the queue right now. So what I'll do is hand things back over to Nick to wrap them up. All right, yeah, so we are gonna be here for another uh, couple of minutes. So if you do have some questions um, and wanna still type those in, you can, and we'll just follow up with you after. Um, so thanks, Matt, for presenting. Um, just a few quick notes before we take off. Um, today's recording will be available on our YouTube channel in just a short while. Uh, so each of you will receive an email with a link to the recording and Matt's slide deck. Uh, next week, we actually have two webinars scheduled. Uh, first up on Tuesday, Stephanie Williams, one of our senior application engineers on our Drop Tower team, will be here to discuss the simplicity of Blue Hill Impact testing software and how it can increase your lab's efficiency and throughput for impact testing. And then on Thursday, Mike Boyd, a senior application engineer from our High Force Applications team, will be here to discuss uh, the latest version of ASTM A370-19, uh, including common challenges and reviewing what's changed. Uh, you can find a, a link to sign up on instron.com. With that said, I just want to thank Matt for presenting today. Uh, and thanks for answering, the, answering those questions that came in when people registered. And thank all of you for attending. Uh, stay healthy, everyone. We hope to see you again next time.